Hey everyone, my name is Ryan, and today I have good and bad news. The bad news is that Xcode does not yet natively run on iPad. But the good news is that I have an interesting workaround to run Xcode on iPad. If you continue watching, you'll get a taste of what it's like to develop, test, and publish apps on iPad. So what you'll need to follow along with this video is an iPad, a Mac computer, the latest version of Xcode for Mac, the Luna Display hardware module, and the Luna Display app for iPad and Mac. And that's it. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing we'll do is we're gonna allow Xcode to wirelessly install and debug apps on our iPad. To do this, you need Xcode 9 and up and iOS 11 and up. What you'll do is you'll open up Xcode and then you'll go to Window, Devices and Simulators. As you can see, Xcode has not recognized any devices yet. We're gonna plug in our iPad using a USB-C cable or lightning cable, depending on which iPad you have and make sure your iPad is unlocked. Now we see that Xcode has recognized my iPad Pro. To allow Xcode to wirelessly install and debug apps, we're gonna select connect via network. You should now see an icon next to iPad Pro that shows that the iPad is now connected through the network. For this to work, make sure your iPad and Mac are in the same network. We can now unplug our iPad and we see that Xcode continues to recognize our iPad Pro on the devices. The second step is to install the Luna Display, which is a tiny USB-C device that enables you to use an iPad or another Mac as a high-performance secondary display. We're gonna plug it into our Mac and follow the instructions to install the required software. Once the Luna Display app is installed on our Mac, we have to give it permission to view our screen in order to function as a secondary monitor. Before we can use our Luna, the app will update the device firmware. We are now done with the installation process for our primary Mac computer. The next thing we have to do is we have to download the Luna Display app for iPad. We're going to open up the App Store and download the app. Once the app has been downloaded, we can open it up and allow it to wirelessly connect to our Mac. And now our iPad is a wireless secondary monitor for our Mac. I'm going to enable the higher resolution mode so everything looks better and sharper. And there we go. We are ready to code. Um, the awesome thing is we can now open up Xcode and we're going to create a new project. We're going to select augmented reality app and we're going to call this LiDAR test. We're creating a very simple LiDAR enabled app for my 2020 iPad Pro. We're going to say next and we're gonna create. Now, I have to change a few things. Since this iPad is still running iOS 13.4, I'm gonna select that as my target. And I'm also going to select um, my iPad Pro in the devices dropdown. Um, as you can see, I'm actually running Xcode on this iPad, but I can also wirelessly connect to it uh, uh, through Xcode, which is really awesome. And so we're going to go into our view controller and we're going to remove the default code that came with the project. Before we get started, we're also going to import ARKit. And now we're going to overwrite our view did appear. There we go. Super view did appear, animate it. And then I'm going to create a function called setup AR view that configures our AR view for the LiDAR session. And so I'm going to say func setup AR view. And in this case, we're gonna create a new configuration, which is of AR world configuration type. And then we're gonna enable plane detection for both horizontal and vertical planes. And as you can see, it's really fast typing in Xcode on this iPad. So there's almost zero latency um, between me typing and actually seeing it on the display. So this is almost like I'm using Xcode on the iPad. Um, and then we're also going to enable our scene reconstruction, um, which is an option for a LiDAR iPad. I'm going to select mesh with classification. Um, now we're going to uh, run our configuration. And then the final thing we're going to do is we're going to enable a debug mode where we can see the mesh that the LiDAR uh, sensor is creating. This is for debugging purposes, but it's really cool to see what a LiDAR sensor really um, perceives in the environment. 
And so we're going to say AR view debug options. I'm going to insert um, show scene understanding. There we go. And so we wrote all this code on iPad, but now we can actually run it on the same iPad that Xcode is running on. And so we're going to say run. And it's going to build the app. This can take a few seconds. Um, but as you can see, I am really writing code on this iPad in Xcode and also running it on the same iPad, but without really being connected through a wire. Now, the Mac has to run in the background or in, on the same Wi-Fi network, but this is still really cool. And so the app is loading. We're going to say OK for allowing access to the camera, and we're going to move around. And as you can see, the LiDAR sensor is building this mesh geometry, and it's really cool. And that's how you run Xcode on iPad. Now, I know this is not a perfect solution, but to me, this is an exciting glimpse at a near future in which you and I develop, test, and publish apps on iPad. So tell me, are you going to try this out yourself? Let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to see more of my content, give this video a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to never miss out.